Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of The Outlet, Season 1, Intimacy with God. And today we have Nutty! Yeah. And she's going to be sharing her story and what it looks like to have intimacy with God. So, don't want to keep y'all waiting, so let's just jump right into it. So, the first thing is, what's your testimony? Very short. Um, so, coming to Christ? Mm-hmm. Um, it was December of 2017 when I got saved. Um, and basically what that looked like that month was a very rough month for me. Um, I was dealing with depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. like all of that. Um, and basically it came to a point where I was going to take my life. Like I reached mm -hmm. that point. Um, and God ended up sending someone basically literally right on time, like in the midst of me about to do it, mm -hmm. ends up calling me. Wow. Um, and yeah, at that very moment, like. I was asking God for a sign. Like, I was in the middle of asking God, like, God, if you really want me to stay alive. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you're really real, like, yeah. show me yourself or bring right. yourself to me. And he did so. Um, yes. So that was pretty much it. What does your intimate relationship with God looks like? Um, spending time with him. Mm -hmm. Getting in his word. Um, I feel like I haven't really reached a point of intimacy. Well, it took me until this year to reach it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like at first I was always struggling with, like, okay, like, how do, how do I... You know, how do I get closer to God? Like, how do I get more intimate with him? And yeah. I thought it was just praying. Yeah. I thought it was just opening my Bible and reading it. But then I realized that it was becoming a chore. Yeah. Like, that's really what it was. Mm -hmm. um, until probably about, I want to say like February, I came to a point where God revealed to me, intimacy with me, relationship with me is literally like pursuing any other relationship. Yeah, that in your life. Um, take me on a date. Mm -hmm. Ask me questions. Be right. intentional. Um, literally, being intentional. Like, it's, we make it. We make it this hard thing, like how do we have a relationship with God when it's really just take him on a date, sit down, ask him questions, get to know him, mm -hmm. um, and he's going to answer. So like, what does it look like on a day that you feel distant from God? Like, how do you refresh yourself? I literally run into his presence. Mm -hmm. um, I had an issue, I'm going to say had an issue, where when I felt distant, I would run to other things to fill me up, mm -hmm. to fill those voids, to fill that distant, empty space. Um, mm -hmm. But recently, all recently... Um, I've discovered in his presence there is fullness of joy literally yeah. in his presence all those things that I'm feeling go away mm -hmm. because even things of even things like feeling distant that's the enemy yeah. trying to attack you trying to pull a wall up trying to say oh because you did this because you sinned because you did whatever it was mm -hmm. you know you're disqualified to have right. a relationship with God God doesn't want to talk to you but God is always there yeah. he says knock and I will open Amen. seek and you shall find Amen. So. yes okay so do you have any tips on anyone that's wanting to Grow an intimate relationship with God. Any tips? Even if they're not Christian, like, even but if they're, they're not seeking. Christian. Yeah. Um, again, I would definitely say try him out, for one, mm -hmm. um, and literally take God on a date. Yeah. Like, exactly what a date would look like. Um, you, you're going to plan it out. Mm -hmm. You're not going to just go in there, okay, let me just see what this is about. You, you're going to do your research on the person. Right. You're going to sit, trying to figure out, okay, like, what is this person like? What is this person, like... What can I, what do I want to know about the person? Right. Um, so yeah, like take him on a date, be intentional. Um, don't go in there, like just not knowing like what you're going to talk about, what you're going to do. Right. Um, and just getting into his word. Mm -hmm. Like that's the truth. Yeah. That's the mighty truth. Um, that's where you'll get to know everything you need to know about God. Mm -hmm. Everything you need to know about yourself. Um, mm -hmm. the, the word is real. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. And really yeah like getting into his presence um getting community mm -hmm. um you god reveals himself through people yes. sometimes the only jesus that people see is you yes um so just getting to know people talking to people um and not being afraid to mm -hmm. not letting any sin anything condemn you from relationship with others yeah. with other believers um because god wants relationship with you and he wants relationship for you mm -hmm. um so yeah. yeah that's good so what about if is church hurt church like, hurt like they've been to church, they know of God, and but they just don't want to build that relationship with Him because of what may have happened in the church. Hmm. People, I feel like that's a, a yeah, very common a thing. thing. Yeah. I would say take it to God. Um, and the reason the reason why I say that is because I mean I don't I don't know exactly what that church could have looked like because mm -hmm. it could have been people who are in church but yeah. they're not really in church Church, right like you know what i'm yeah. saying it's a whole um, different thing of having a relationship it's a, and being in church. Nah, it's a yeah it's a whole different thing people also look at it as okay me going to church is having a relationship with god no right. that's not yeah. true it has its place mm -hmm. don't get me wrong it has its place in the kingdom but it's not 
it's not the the driving force it's not people right. sometimes say okay if i read my bible i have a relationship with god people yeah. literally go to church and say okay if i receive something yeah. if the pastor gives me a word this is me have a relationship with god but no right. having a relationship with god is dying to yourself picking mm -hmm. up the cross and following him every day that's relationship every single day mm -hmm. um so yeah i feel like church again it has its place but it's not the driving force it's not the one and only thing mm -hmm. okay like you'll find a church home but first focus on your relationship with him on talking to him on seeking him mm -hmm. um wholeheartedly because he's not he's not coming he's not revealing himself to somebody who's half stepping it he's right. not he's not doing that he's he's not doing that right so you just led me to a different question what do you have to say to someone that's trying to seek god but they feel like they aren't hearing anything from okay. him um I'm, i felt led to say the first thing is god is always talking yeah it's either you're not either you're not listening or you're not trying to listen mm -hmm. and that usually happens because your heart posture isn't right yeah. it's all about perspective mm -hmm. god may be answering you but because it's not the in the way that you want him to answer mm -hmm. you're not listening he's right. always That's talking true. um that is so good yeah like he's he's always talking it's about perspective and also knowing that if god doesn't answer because sometimes you know he you guys you'd be probably like oh he's really just not answering me right um it's because you're not a pastor bishop George T. Wright said this yesterday at church. It's mm. because you're not ready for the answer. Mm. And that blessed wow. me. Because we've all been there. You know, yeah. it's like, God, like, I really want this. I really want this. And it's just like, daughter, you're not ready. So right. you're not ready. That's so good. And that's all it is. So just continue to press. Continue to, Pat Bishop was saying this yesterday, continue to expand on your prayers. Mm -hmm. Make them stronger. Make them bigger. Don't ever think, oh, I have to stay in this one prayer because it's not answered. Yeah. Keep going. When the time is right, God will, God will get right He'll back to it. will lead you right to it. That's yeah. so good. So, um, one last thing. Do you have any um, specific memory of a time that you felt like you needed God the most and, like, the devil would try to, to steer you away, but you was trying to build... Cause I don't know if that makes sense, yeah. but I know a lot of people is trying to build a relationship with God, but it's just always something in the middle, like a, a huge roadblock. Um, I feel like it was probably for like a smooth like six months where this happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but basically the enemy was attacking me with my past because mm -hmm. if you think about it, he he's so he's so what's the word I'm looking for? He's so pressed mm -hmm. <laughs> to attack you yeah. with your past because he doesn't know your future. Mm -hmm. So that's all he has. Your mistakes, the things everything. That's all he has against you. Yeah. And Wait, so in yeah. time where I actually fell into sin, like a it was like end of the world for me mm -hmm. um and that's when i was really on a high on high for christ so mm -hmm. it was like falling to sin really like made me feel like okay like i'm terrible right. and the enemy used that as a way to get in mm -hmm. and it was like you see you did this like you yeah. have a change you're not going to get better right. and literally after that point like i allow i let that wall be built between me and god mm -hmm. i literally ran from god I went the entire mm -hmm. opposite direction and was like I'm, i can't do this you're mm -hmm. and the enemy was really just kind of like as i'm running the opposite direction he's cheering me on like yeah keep running the opposite direction because you're not qualified because you wow. really can't do this you can't hang you don't know how to live for god and ever for the, like the next six months he was literally just bringing people up in my like bridges that got burned he mm -hmm. reformed wow. and i literally walked across the bridge like okay and was just living back in my past because yeah. i felt like okay this is this is what i'm good at mm -hmm. um so yeah he for a good six months he literally attacked me um until finally like god just like come here all right like come let's here. go like when god has a plan for your life mm -hmm. he also knows about the detour yeah he also knows like those moments where you're gonna fall yeah he's the author and the finisher of our faith he's the mm -hmm. alpha and the omega the beginning and the end he knows in between he knows all of it so he knows and he, he mm -hmm. plans accordingly all yeah. things work for the good of good for those who love them mm -hmm. um so come i feel on. like <laughs> so i feel like that those six months like yeah it was horrible and maybe it wasn't in god's initial plan but mm -hmm. he knew how to make a way out of it how to make it right. how to make it good mm -hmm. um if that makes sense so i mm -hmm. feel like it was necessary because it put me in a place of desperation yeah right before i went into that season that season of um craziness mm -hmm. um i was very complacent like mm -hmm. very comfortable like where i was at i was yeah. just like okay like no i pray to god um for an hour right. like i had a schedule of how yeah. i did things and god was just saying like he showed me the kind of like, humbled me like threw me in that mm -hmm. and then picked me back up yeah and it was just like it put me in a place where i was just like oh i need more yeah. i want more and god was like yeah you have to do more yeah and i was uncomfortable when i came out of that because i yeah. felt like 
people probably looking at me like I'm crazy. Like right. I was wilding for six months. I was dating this boy that was just like mm. just worldly and just yeah. like you've been there. You yeah, been like there. I looked crazy. So I felt really uncomfortable and God was like, You feel uncomfortable because I want more out of you. Mm -hmm. And literally this has been my best season. It's wow. like right after that, these January, yes. February, March, April, what May? Five months. Yes. And this has been like like literally walking in wholeness and like we thank God. Amen. Thank God. thank God for that. <laughs> That's a testimony right there because I know a lot of young women can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Relate to just feeling like, you know, looking for that fulfillment in people that can never give that yeah, fulfillment. God is and the this, only one that yes. can do it. He knows all of your voids. He knows all of your secrets. Mm -hmm. He knows all of your needs. Like, not yes. wants, but needs. He knows those too. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget. But he knows all of your needs. Right. And he's there. Like, he's willing. And that's mm -hmm. what's just so amazing about his love. It makes me emotional. Because no. it's like, he's literally standing there. Like, he has his hand out. He's just waiting for you to grab it. God yeah. is not a forceful God. He's yeah. not going to force you. He's not going to drag you into it. Mm -hmm. It's your yes. Yeah. And he does the rest like literally yeah so the sermon today and what really stuck with me was god turned my pain into purpose wow. and it was just like so it just sad. really stuck with me because it was like god was never really searching mm -hmm. he was never tugging on me to come like yes mm -hmm. he was always there in the midst of all the sin that i was doing mm -hmm. but he was never like come here like come here like pulling me by my hand like he had his presence around me yes mm -hmm. because he saved me from plenty of situations mm -hmm. but it's just like during my lowest time, God revealed to me my purpose. So he yeah. just used my pain to like push forth this person that I've never yeah. thought would be here right now. So it's just yeah. like, that is Every, so good. Literally everything works for the greater good. He mm -hmm. uses all of those moments, all the situations. That brings me back to um something that somebody prophesied um, over me. And was basically, I was in a point where I was just like, okay, like, it was like the beginning of my walk where mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like, God, I've been through, like, why did you put me through? That's when I finally asked him. I was mm -hmm. just, I was afraid to ask that question. Mm -hmm. But I was like, why did you put me through? Like, why did you let me go through that? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you ask those questions because right. it's like, yo, like, you let me go through all of that. Like, mm -hmm. all of that, the relationships, the, yes. the being molested, all of these, yeah. all of these things that women go through. Mm -hmm. I felt like I went through everything. Like, there was nothing yeah. that didn't happen to me. Wow. So I came to a point where I was literally asking that. And literally, somebody comes up to me and prophesies with me and says, God is saying to you the things that you've been through were not in vain. Yeah. These are the very single things that he's going to use for another woman. Yeah. Your testimony will be somebody else's breakthrough. Yes. And so I feel like we should never lose sight of that because that yes. blessed me. And now that I'm in a place where I'm actually seeing all of that manifest, mm -hmm. like when I speak, I, you know, when I'm talking to other women and mm -hmm. I'm sharing my testimony and they're like, oh, wow, like I'm going through yeah. the same thing. It's like, we, yeah, we're we, not alone. We're like, not we're alone. alone. Like, we be yeah. sitting here like, I can't tell nobody this, but yeah. there's always somebody else that's going through what you're going through and may either A, need you to walk with them through it, mm -hmm. walk with them through it, <laughs> <laughs> or for you to just share. Yeah. Because that literally can be the very thing that they need. Like, okay, wow, there is hope. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, you know, somebody was delivered. Somebody was set free. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Time with God look like and, and so. how, <laughs> how do you like go about that so literally everything you said about the schedule thing like something mm -hmm. that god showed me back again in like march uh, end of march mm -hmm. beginning of april um was basically that i had him on a schedule i was like okay like i'll wake up like it's like when we wanted to talk to yeah god. and god is like nah like it's when i, I want to talk, talk to you like i would literally be like okay i'm gonna talk to the guy at 5 a.m even mm -hmm. and that sounds good people are like oh you wake up at 5 a.m for the yeah. most time like it sound good on a yeah, tour, you know right. what I'm saying? So I would be like, okay, I'll wake up at 5 a.m. and then again at 8 p.m. But God's like, God reveals to me, he's like, what about those times when you're out with your friends? Right. And I want you, and I say, go home, daughter. Yeah. Because I have something for you. Yeah. I want to talk to you. Um. So it yes. literally took for that moment, like me realizing that, that I was limiting God for one, limiting mm -hmm. my time with him. And it just, it wasn't for his good it mm -hmm. was i wasn't doing anything for his glory at that point i was being selfish yeah. basically like honestly i was being selfish because yeah. it's like oh i i don't have time for this i want to be with my friends and god right. was just like you're you're missing out on the levels i'm trying to take you to and the yes. things that i'm trying to do with you mm -hmm. um for my kingdom yeah so it came to that point and i was just like yes it's literally dying to yourself like and that's like that's a daily thing we mm -hmm. think it's just, just one time we say okay god i'm dying to myself now nah, like yeah. every day you have to die to yourself yeah. because our heart is deceitful at the end mm -hmm. of the day like yes. we want our flesh is weak our spirit is willing but our flesh is weak so it's an everyday thing because every yeah. day you're gonna wake up and say oh i rather do this i rather yeah. do that but it's it's saying you know what like i serve i serve 
I'm just I'm gonna yeah, serve God. Right. I'm gonna choose Him first, mm -hmm. and everything else will fall into place. Yeah, it's definitely a journey, and it's nothing that once you get saved or once you go to church on a Sunday, like it's is not ending at that church. Yeah. It's not ending at the when you get out of the pool. Like mm -hmm. it's a continuous thing, and the enemy tries you all the, the time. time. Like yes. it's like all the time. That's like, the problem. You'll be like, oh, it's just one time. If I get saved, if I get baptized, whatever mm -hmm. it is, like this is it. I'm good. Yeah, and that's that's what happened to me. Like when I first got saved, it's you becoming complacent. You're comfortable. Yeah. You think you always have to be on guard. Yeah. You always have to be on guard because the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. Like, always. Yeah. So. And just like what you said earlier, like, you never know who's watching you. And mm -hmm. you never know if you're the only church that people see. Yeah. Or the only, mm -hmm. you know, closest thing to Christ that they see. Mm -hmm. So that's really good that you said that because... It, it just helps us to remind ourselves where our heart is and, mm -hmm. and what our heart is facing, what our focus is on, and make yeah. sure it's not focused on the things of the world. And yeah. we're just leading by example, essentially. It's bigger than us. And mm -hmm. that took me a long time to realize that, too. Like, it came to a point where I had a selfish mentality, and I was like, okay, well, like, even especially when like, I was, like, falling back into sin, I was like, okay, like, whatever. Like, this is normal. Like, I don't want people looking at me. Like, mm -hmm. and it was just like, God literally, like, showed me, like, oh, it's bigger yeah. than you, son. Like, yes. it's, it's really bigger <laughs> than you. Like, he definitely showed me that at the retreat. Like, it's so much bigger than you. Like, we really be like, okay, if I'm good, if I'm doing this, if I'm doing that. Yeah. But it's like, no, it's not. I'm using you for the greater good for other people. It's yeah, not. Yeah, it's never about it's us. It's not about you. Like, it's, you have to continue to be that light. Mm -hmm. You have to because people, like, like we just said, like, you might really be the only Jesus mm -hmm. they see. God is love, and we need to show them that God is love. It's important to note is that when Christians, when we're so quick to judge others, we always have to keep in mind, know where they're coming from. You don't mm -hmm. know their background. You don't know why they're dressed the way they have. What if yeah. that's the only clothes they have? It's all about perspective. This whole entire journey is about perspective. You don't know what they're coming from. You don't know how broken they are, mm -hmm. what they're dealing with, what they're struggling with. It, like I just say, that's probably the only clothes they have. You yeah. really, you really just don't know. You, don't you probably know have no story. knowledge. Yeah. You don't know their story. And like the last thing that I want to leave you with is that it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. Yes. God's job to judge and our job to love. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the it. only thing. And I that's feel like it. Christians, we tend to lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. But that's literally when love is love. Yeah. <laughs> like that's. And, and like. Oh my gosh, like, I wanted to wrap this up real quick, but, like, it just brought on a whole different thing on my heart. Like, the whole thing with, like, racism and, like, the LGBT community mm -hmm. and things like that. I feel like um, people of the world tend to, like, push themselves away from, like, white, black, or Asian, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody separates themselves and put themselves in our own group. And it's like, that's not who God called us to be. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you're not a Christian, like, that's not, it's not supposed to be, we're supposed to love on each other. Yeah. Regardless of what that person may believe Believing, if you yeah. think it's correct or not like we're supposed to love on them in that yeah. way and i see like a lot of times especially on twitter like i'll just be scrolling and i'll see like twitter. people just talk so badly about christians especially they would just talk so badly on like people in the lgbt community and it's just like mm -hmm. that's not the way even if you wanted to get them saved like that's not the way to no. to get them there like the only thing that's going to get them there it's is love by them. loving them showing them mm -hmm. god's love something that a friend um because i was at a place where I was struggling with trying to bring somebody that I was really close to, like, close mm -hmm. to, to God. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very, like, the person was basically, like, just saying, like, oh, like, there's all these rules and all these things. Yeah. Like, I don't want to come to God, da, da, da. And then a friend shared with me, like, the key to, like, bringing someone to God mm -hmm. is, is is showing them God's love. Like, mm -hmm. nobody's, think about if you go on a date with someone. This is the example the person gave me. Think about going on a date with someone. Mm -hmm. If they come to you and show you all of these things, like, if you, if on, if on your first date with a guy, mm -hmm he comes to you like oh by the way i don't like this i want that i don't want right. this i want you this you're not gonna you're be, not gonna want to do it you're not gonna want to do it you're gonna yeah. be hesitant but you're gonna show them the good side to you yeah and then everything else will come once yeah. a person experiences god's love they're gonna experience that love in such a way that they're gonna want yeah to live you know yeah. to live like christ yes. they're gonna want to do it so i think that's what it comes down to like if we do our one job and that is to love to love our neighbor as ourselves mm -hmm. all commandments are filled yes Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having we me. We appreciate this. you. This is so good. I pray that this video blesses you and share it with your friends, your cousins, whoever. And, you know, join the family, get connected, and see you in the next video. Bye.